Hello there. Once again, Santon from Antonimo Bay. Thank you for stopping by the collection room today. Today I'm taking a look at some comic books. Um, there's my figures, my collection on the wall here. Today we are looking at uh, Fem Force issue 73 through 76. And you'll notice, once again, I've mentioned it numerous times, but there's, there's a lot of variation in size of issues. Uh, height, different cuts, stuff like that. I don't know. Sometimes they're color, sometimes they're not. These happen to be color. Uh, let's see here. Get an exact year for you. 1994. Oh, I love the year 1994. What a good year. <clears throat> uh, this is issue 73 of the Federal Emergency Mission Force, otherwise known as Fem Force. I'd, I'd never realized before that they started putting that call out on issue 71. Because I saw it on these and I was like, when did they do that? I don't remember them doing that. Uh, yeah, they started back in 71. I totally missed it. Now, um, this is a C. Bradford Gorby cover. And I usually try to comment whose covers are whose and, and follow along. Now, I'm used to seeing a, a, a particular style, style from most of these guys. And like this to me does not really look like uh, uh, Gorby's work. Simply because this treatment that it's got over top of it or done to it. I don't really know what this is. And if anybody knows, uh, sound off. Um, normally his cover art looks like, I think this is a Gorby cover. Pretty sure this is, a, well, I can't be positive. I could show you the interior work. Um, his work just looks different. And I don't really know what this soft airbrushed uh, type look is or how it's accomplished. Um, quite a few issues of Fem Force have it. I don't know if I'm wild about it. Uh, the art itself is fine. Uh, the coloring to it, I don't know. It's kind of before before that airbrushed look and before kind of the, the ultra digital look of comics. So I don't know what you call this, but if anybody knows, uh, let me know what, what you call this. Um, as far as interiors, uh, we got stories by Bill Black. Uh, art and letters are by Dick Ayers. Inks by Mark Heike. Um, Heike would probably know uh, more about, well, not Heike, colors. Reb and Christie, they would probably know more about uh, what, this, uh, what this treatment is. It almost looks like a softer watercolored uh, type cover. I'm not sure, but it is what it is. Uh, so we got Dick Ayers on pencils inside. He is, uh, he's one, he's easy, one of the top three, uh, in my opinion. He does a lot of the work. I love Bill Black. I love, uh, uh, C. Bradford Gorby's, and I like Dick Ayers' work on these very much. Heike's pretty good, I think, if, if I remember if he writes some or not, or draws some or not. Anyway, we're still, like I said, we're still in the color era. This book doesn't always have color, but... Uh, looks fantastic. Um, okay, they are drawing her ears pointy. It's just hidden behind her hair. Uh, a lot of times it seems Stardust doesn't have the pointy ears, and she's supposed to have pointy ears because she's an alien. And that is an alien. That is definitely an alien. That is an ugly alien, but we'll take it. Got quite a few guest stars this time. Still not shying away from good old face punching. Hmm, let's see what's going on with the AC alert. We've been trying to determine how we could beat, best meet the new requirements of distributors. Okay, yeah, this is 94, so um, I remember this. They had all sorts of troubles with distribution in the mid and late 90s. You had to move certain amounts of books and sell certain amounts of books through Diamond uh, to get distributed or your shops had to pay back and, and something like that. I can't remember what all was going on with it, but basically it sucked and it, it caused a lot of problems in the comic industry. Uh, of course, Diamond uh, distribution being ha having a monopoly on the entire uh, distribution center in those years. I don't know if they still do, but I, I would assume they probably still do, unless you're independently publishing uh, outside of Diamond, but you still can't get it distributed. So, I mean, unless you're selling in an online store and everybody knows where to go to get it, uh, you're still at the mercy of Diamond, which I think is kind of terrible. 
to possibly all the way terrible. More probable actresses lined up for the possible but not likely Femme Force movie. Um, I mentioned these rings. I looked these up. They do exist. Uh, they are not terribly expensive. If you wanted to buy, like, you know, they're, they're maybe 20 bucks a piece or something like that. So that was kind of cool. Uh, She-Cat clawing her way to the top. The, yeah, I'm looking for the name. No, nope, this is a Heike cover. I was thinking it was a Gorby cover, but it's Heike. Uh, but Gorby has the inside. So you got Story, Bill Black and Don Secrees. Artist, uh, C. Bradford Gorby. Uh, anchor, Mark Heike. Colorist, Rebecca Black. Letterer, Lance Breedlove. Uh, editor, Frederick Black. So, F is for fear. That's kind of a cool looking house right there. I like that opening, whole opening page. And I'm liking the use of panel work. I love these floating panels that you get one and it looks like you just laid the other one over that one and this one over that one. Um, and they're kind of, they're out of sequence and kind of just chunked in there, you know, on top. I love that. That's probably, if you're gonna use panels, do it that way or, or don't use panels and kind of just blotch over it. I like this guy. This work on this coat is really well. Well drawn. Uh, I often comment when it comes to Gorby's work, he tends to make the waist a little bit smaller than I would probably recommend. Uh, but his the way he does hair is like top notch. He adds the right amount of curls. He like puts a lot of curls and everything. That's usually what gives his uh, his work away, as I could tell by the um, by the hair and the waist. And like Bill Black's work, I can usually tell because the bosoms are just slightly larger than everybody else's artwork. <coughs> but hey, he's the man, and that's that's probably why. Uh, I love this page. That is a great uh, it's a great page. Pop. And we got more of those floaty panels. I love those, how they just set over top. Looks like we're gonna go throughout that with the rest of the book. We got some, a lot of busy work going on with the panels. I'm liking this monster thing here. Okay, that's, that's a crazy face. I'm liking this. I don't know what 301 cent hammer is, but it's cool looking. You must bring me the Jennifer Burke, the second Miss Victory. Biggest thing in collector rings, take your terror ring. Um, yeah, like I said, I already, already talked about these. They're pretty cool, but let's just look for them on eBay. They're there. Is this a flip book? Do we, oh, it's flip book action. What's on the other side here? Lois Hamilton is Dawn Hunter. The Cold War gets hot. Uh, this is zero. Uh, this is probably one of the earlier flip books. I, I, you see AC does flip books, but it's usually in their, their thicker later issues. Who's the artist on this? Um, let's see, art, Dick Ayers. Art and letter, Dick Ayers. I was gonna say the, the size of, of these was making me think it was probably uh, um, Bill Black, but I guess not. So yeah, we got a story in the back. I'm seeing all sorts of things that look pretty interesting in there. Can't see as I've known this, this story before. No, don't tell me that. The end. Huh. Well, anyway, a uh, nice photo cover. I wonder if, oh, I forgot to even look who the actress is. Uh, Don Hunter, graduate, will be played by Lois Hamilton. Oh, Lo oh, it's right there. Lois Hamilton is the Don Hunter. Is Don Hunter. Don Hunter, not the Don Hunter. Don Hunter. Like her name's Don. Just, ah. How did that even happen? That was a mess. Oh, so this is another Gorby. 
Gorby from Heike. So I'm apparently, apparently they work together on this type of cover. That is a wild cover where you've got both Rad and Miss Victory. And then it looks like stories by Bill Black, pencils by C. Bradford Gorby, inks by Mark Heike and Bill Black, colors by Rebecca Black. Yeah, it's it's more of that strange kind of hazy look and I'm not sure exactly how that's done, but like I said, these are very busy pages. We've got a lot going on, very expressive faces. That's pretty typical whenever we're looking at a, a C. Bradford Gorby book. He tends to be, in my opinion, draws the most expression in the faces. Like crazy, crazy face. And that's a huge, huge panel there. And another huge splash panel with the little floating panels just tossed in on top of it. So that's pretty cool. That is a square headed man. That is a, that is a, a rock jaw of, a, of an individual there. Looks like we're getting ready to chuck some people around. I was gonna say, this is another one of those uh, Federal Emergency Mission Force uh, subheading thing that they got on the covers. Yeah, that's the power of a just a nicely drawn face punch. Let's get serious about beating people down. That's how they do it. In AC Town, I never really liked Tara's weird uh, paramilitary looking outfit. Uh, just looks, I don't know, doinky. I mean, I understand why it's there and it's probably much more like uh, conservative looking than some of the some of the other outfits that she wears, but you know what? I prefer the classic green uh, camouflage bikini looking thing that she wears as opposed to the, the weird tights thing, like the army jogger look. Issue number 76, what? If this is Miss Victory, who's rad? And we've got another Corby after Black, so I don't know what the deal, what that means. If it's it's uh, Corby after Black, I'm, I'm guessing this is like some sort of combination of work on the cover. It looks like it has some of the same type of of airbrushy type look to it, but not not to the extent that the other ones did. Uh, for the interiors, it looks like we got Bill Black, C. Bradford Gorby, uh, Inks Mark Heike, color Rebecca Black, letters Walter Paisley. And we're doing some rock'em sock'em. Great panel designs, uh, or I should just say lack thereof, because we got one, two, three, uh, four different scenes that are all the same thing going on, but it's all in like the same big splashy panel without a breakup. So it, it really, it tells the story of a fight and of movement probably better that way than it does, in my opinion, than just being like little blocks and panels. It seems to flow better because you just, you can tell it's, it's one series of movements. I think it reads better. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Vicious beatdowns. We never pull the punches in this book. I'm not saying I like need that or love it or appreciate it or anything like that. It is just something that I notice with AC Comics, with Fem Force particular. Always so much face punching and savage beating. And I don't know. It's not like so many comics don't do that. They just chuck stuff at each other or use energy blasts or. Something like that. This is a great giant monster guy. This whole page. That looks awesome. Capricorn. The great goat god. Capricorn. 
Nice panel designs. They just look like you threw them at it, and yet it tells the story well. And it, some of these you, you can just look at and, and, and gather everything that's happening. Some of these you got to really kind of stare at for a little bit to pick them up. And each of those has their space uh, in the, the form of storytelling. And I love this page. Look at that. What is that? Six panels? Seven panels? All broken up differently, all telling the same same image. All right, here's another Gorby face. Uh, just just that kind of expressionism. Sometimes looks a little over the top, but also without it, uh, it's easy to lose the emotion if you're not amping it up to 11 sometimes. AC alert. What we got going on? AC Comics on the convention trail. I wonder if these guys still go to conventions. I kind of, I kind of doubt it, since I think mostly conventions now are just like uh, cosplayers and BS, and there are almost no actual uh, comics anymore at comic conventions. So, not that I've seen. Went to a, a couple uh, smaller ones, and literally there would be like two people there with comics, and everything else was just crap, extra stuff. Anyway, that is that is four issues of Fem Force for you. The Federal Emergency Mission Force uh, seventy three through, through seventy six. Uh, appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much. That's my story. Bye.